Oh, all the black. Sorry. Welcome back to Doki Doki Ledger Club. I still don't know why it says why we. Wh I still don't understand the warning. Nothing warranting it so far. Hit. You can use the skip button to fast forward through tests. You've already read. Okay. Natsuki's move quickly improves, laughing and pointing out things to me. Let me get back to the place where I was. Alright. So apparently, I have to read my poem out again. I don't even know fucking why. I don't even know why my body's morphing right now, but that's happening. What I do, I ain't nothing wrong. Everything's the same. It's wearing a yellow shirt. Stupid. Uh, Yuri, please. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Caribou. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh, uh, it, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you're you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little bit more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like to, like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to tr truly enable your readers to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. Literally just started the recording and my dogs have gone batshit crazy. That's a good sign. I see! That's certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course! Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendency as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for me. For more. The, enti the enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon, wow, the moon increments its phase and effects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The fuck is a knife talk? The very sunlight that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to my following to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry and more and more infrequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the, the raccoon shows me its excitement. What the fuck? A rush of blood. Ugh! Classic Pavolian conditioning. I sliced the bread and I fed myself. Okay. <laughs> um, I was a little bit more daring this one. Sorry. That's gross! I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. <laughs> I don't know if it's my fault, but I can begin to imagine that this poem is about... That's right! It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels to, for me to indulge in my more unusual habit hobbies. Oh! Dyslexia, you won't beat me. It's those sorts of things I'm us usually forced to keep to myself. So I'm sometimes enjoying writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? 
Be because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, caribou? Well, I guess I do. I feel like everybody, everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I didn't, hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Well, you should sure ain't. I might, might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. I am. Sayori! <laughs> oh my goodness. This is so good, Caribou. Eh. I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem. Ugh. You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sayori! You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez! I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little bit more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a caribou poem. Ah, And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feeling in it. Huh? Kaori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feeling is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what I'm kind of writing you like. What kind of writing you liked in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least give it some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always... You're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. That's a little bit out of character. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Zayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes you have a little rain cloud in your head. A sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. Oh my gosh, he's like four, but it's cute. And make a nice happy rainbow. Oh, she's like two now. Sayori, that's, that's unexpectedly poetic. Ah, uh, it's... It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Karabu. I should go write that down then. <laughs> you can read my poem now, okay? Oh, here we go. Battles! I pop up my scalp like a little, li little cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my things. You know about the sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to wait. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the top shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles. All in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. 
Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave. Discovering secrets, hi hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging, digging, scraping, scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty self should, could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in my friends. In come my friends. <laughs> in they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottle that much? I frantically pull them from myself one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile beneath my, between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. That's not fun. Uh, <laughs> they were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. It's kind of depressing. When you think about it, okay, that's a little depressing. Okay. Holy crap! <laughs> Sayori, did you write this? Of course I did. Didn't you tell... Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught a whole lot. Taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. Eh? That's her new voice. <laughs> After reading that poem, that's her new voice. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. I would say it's pretty much 100% creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. And it was a good poem. It's just dark. Oh, thanks. I feel like, uh, I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing is the best. I'm going to keep writing till I die. Okay. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. See, you always, always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Uh, Monica. Hi again, Caribou. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that! As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself! Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I won't go on yet! You never know. I w w want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I get my poem to Monica. Alright! It's pretty good. You've been spending some time with Natsuki, haven't you? You must like her writing style. Uh, yeah. I think it's a neat way to tell a story. Hmm. I don't disagree. Natsuki's poems may be cute, but they're also meaningful. I can see why you'd be into that style. I guess that means you're not so not as much of a fan of Yuri's poems, then. Uh, I wouldn't say yeah. I, I kind of like everyone's poems. That's true, but I'm sure you like more... Some more than others, right? Like Yuri is using use of complex words and symbolism, or Sayori's way of expressing happiness or sadness in a, in a more direct way. You must have some kind of preference, don't you? Uh, not that it is a contest or anything. I was just curious, that's all. But anyway, you want to read my poems now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do. Alright, let's take a look. <laughs> Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue. An endless... <laughs> of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sign, cuisine, tanging. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless pulling of meaningless. The fuck? 
I don't like these poems, man. They're, they're getting way too dark. Load me. The f Uh... <laughs> it's even more abstract than your last one. Uh-huh. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of... It's just a kind of thing I never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like with my... Like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what's a, what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you, you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know... You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. This game's getting weirder and weirder by the moment. I'm not liking it. Wait. It is the tip is wait is this tip even about writing? No. What am I even talking about? Ha 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 ha. That's my advice for today. What is what? I don't understand this game. I'll I'll follow the advice. I don't see the point though. All right, obviously. Oh boy. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Uh, is it that bad? No, 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 it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Uh, this is... This wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously, you'd think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you... Natsuki's face freezes like she just realized something. Y you You're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. And the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I, I have to use the bathroom. Red face, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Kiaribu. Did you do something to Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No, 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 no. <laughs> I just told her that. My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm. Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She skims over it a second time, her face not fading from her face, her smile not fading from her face. I see. At first, I just thought you liked her writing style, but you wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I, I mean, not really. In fact, she didn't. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day too? I'm surprised you don't know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Caribou? Cheating? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Never mind, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. <laughs> anyway, how do you think Natsuki's feeling about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. I was just, it was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hand. Neither of us have noticed her re enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Ugh. You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Uh, but Caribou wrote this poem. And we're supposed to share it with everyone, right? And she already saw the poem! <laughs> Wait, they did say it scanned it twice, right? Ah, fooey. Uh, Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Caribou is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would 
would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just holding on to this. If you insist... What? What are you looking at me like that for? Like what? Ugh. Never mind. Well, I guess Natsuki has my poem now. Not that I really planned on keeping it. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Amy likes spiders. <laughs> this music. Let me compose myself. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has her other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. I'm going to tell everyone. What the fuck are with these poems? They're all dark, depressing, and like... Murderous! This is a murderous poem! Not bad, right? It's bad! <laughs> it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think this was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler anal... Analogy. And allergies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about everyone thinks. Nah, that doesn't matter. It can't about. It can't be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares about something like... what? Who cares what somebody likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Yuri, wrote a, Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but uh, she did. She said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I don't wouldn't doubt that she would have some weird hobbies. Not that there are anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. She feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message of your poem. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so... So consider yourself lucky, okay? <laughs> yeah, lucky. Well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest! Jeez. Just look forward to tomorrow, too. Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought that I messed up that, that sentence. I didn't. Just look forward to tomorrow, too, okay? Alright, I will. Okay, everyone. Save. She's got me worried. She's... Last thing... 
<laughs> I didn't want I didn't want this to come to a safe thing. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poem, right? I have something extra planned for today. So if everyone could sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We would need much more than a few decorations. Sayari has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us that we're actually going to do what we're going to be doing for the event. There you go. Ah, uh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing! Performing? Huh. Uh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to have a be having a poetry performance. Ah! <laughs> Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're going to let any anyone else come up to recite their poems as well. Sayori's so putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori has been coloring a poster. Hold, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to perform in front of all those people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite for poems out loud in front of a whole room of people. I guess I can overlook... I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. <clears throat> but, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put, put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun! That's right! And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you sh want to share with others? To inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all and if And if all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. I will conquer you, you bitch. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least that we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Oh, goodness. Where's the gas coming from? Alright, I think it's done. It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any argument left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll have to get over with it. <laughs> that wasn't the sentence. Alright! Foo! Thanks, Natsuki! What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Uh, I, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to cho choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. 
No, 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 no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Where is this going? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off... To, I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh, <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. <clears throat> the title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins to recite her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her infliction is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the word to life. Words! <laughs> is that something she's done before? Or is, this, is she simply unnatural? I glanced around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Everyone looks amused. Sayori looks amused, I should say. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation? The recitation? The recitation? I don't even really know how to pronounce that word. My head hurts. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go, Jerry? Uh, I'll go next. Uh, whoa! Yori's fired up all of a sudden. Yori clutches a sheet of paper between her hand and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yori anxiously glances up... Anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yori. Y Yuri. It's, it's called... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like she, like what happened when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and its structures that she enunciates. Oh, I did it! <laughs> it's perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she finishes. Everyone is done! Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applying. Everyone joins m me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud her, but we were caught off so off guard that we have m we must have forgotten Jesus. Boo! <laughs> Calm Caleb equals productive Caleb. Relax your mind. Let the words flow up. Move forward. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was so good. Thanks for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next in. So Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. Yay. Hey, Sayori. It's not hard I die. How you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're rea reci reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sori begins reading her poem. Somehow, I feel like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet, which means it's dark and depressing. 
If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said that she likes poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even Caribou liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of deliver. Uh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that soft or gentle deliverance wouldn't work as well. They might need a little bit more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean! That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> Don't make me go before Caribou. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Caribou lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Jeez, you're a nice person! Natsuki! It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have so much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of my po of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more of your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgedly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Well, why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Mm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little bit. While she's still a little enthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's tra trademark style, and it's and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. Aroud. It's spoken aloud. The words feel like bounce up. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. I'm good. Natsuki's finish. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well? Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want to in front of other people. But when it's just my friends... It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you don't have to worry too much about... You don't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I wanted to thank everyone for coming through. It must be... It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure to pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? It'll make pamphlets... I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez! I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already ple pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I'm kind of glad that the music changed. Not gonna lie. I think it, that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. Why not, right? Is this just an endless cycle? How long is this game? 
It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll plan. We'll be. We'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Do I have a crush on... Does this guy have a crush on Monica or something? Ready to go, Sayori. Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal about it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Car Caribou. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go. Alrighty. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like how we get to... I mean... So Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? Uh, she's trying to freaking prod me. You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> uh, it's one of the few decisions we have to make. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I would walk home with Natsuki. I would still walk home with Sayori. Uh, I still like Natsuki. I would still walk home with Sayori because it's where our home is? I don't know. I'm just going to say her. Fuck it. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Natsuki? Eh, but, but, but she's so cute and fun to be around. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem ready, really like you go. You always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Caribou. You think about me too much sometimes. Natsuki deserves would deserve that it if she wanted it too. So. Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry? Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sierra to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. What kind of festival is it? They didn't even explain that. <sighs> Depression. What? She's so freaking dark. Uh uh. Kiss. <laughs> Vanilla. <laughs> Dance. Oh no. Disown it. Shiny. <laughs> Judgment. <laughs> Holy shit. Contamate. Contamination. That's obviously big girl. There you go. Kawaii. Chocolate. Friends. Pink. Party. Lollipop. Hope. Promise. Childhood. Valentine. <laughs> Bouncy! <laughs> the fastest, the faster I get through it, the better. But I think this is the best place to stop this episode. I'm going to continue on, see how far I can get. Maybe I can get to the end of the game today. And as, as far as these episodes go, because I don't know what's going to happen, 
I'm just going to keep posting them every time they come out. So, if I happen to have multiple uploads on the same day for Doki Doki Literature Club, it's more or less because I'm just trying to get these episodes out there and trying to get it out to you guys. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed before and, and support your boy because it's going to get fun. It's going to get real fun and we're about to experiment with a lot of cool stuff. I also got some really cool League of Legends stuff that's going to be coming up on my other channel. So, uh, check that out too. Thank you.